All right, we are live for a Friday edition of the Mike and Mario Show. Excited to be back. A lot of things worth touching on. We got bad job numbers, uh, nice uptick in gold and silver. I think the cryptos is even doing good, Mario. Uh, looks like it's a good Friday heading into the Labor Day weekend. But how you doing, Mario? I'm doing well. Uh, and you, Mike? I'm, I'm doing well, man. Excited, happy. It's the Labor Day, Labor Day weekend, a little bit of extended weekend on our side here. So more family time. And just looking forward to just, you know, letting my hair down, whatever hair I got, my beard, let my hair, beard, beard hair down a little bit, but everything's going well, man. Um, but hope everyone is tuning in is doing well and uh, let's have some fun today, man. So Mario, I guess the pro- most important thing will probably be those job numbers, huh? They didn't uh, pan out the way that w- they were expected to. <laughs> yeah, they were, lot, uh, they were a lot, they were a lot less uh, than expected. I think, uh, they're expected to come in at 750,000 new yeah. uh, non-farm payroll jobs. Uh, the previous stuff. month, they were up to like 940. Yeah. And actually, they revised the uh, previous month higher by 100,000. Uh, but the miss here, I had 750. Uh-huh. It looks like CNBC had 720 expectation. But it was about 50. 500,000 less than expected. Yeah. Uh, so, and if you add the 100,000 they revised up from the previous month, it, it missed by like net net 400,000. And the other thing that I saw that uh, doesn't bode well for the economy was the average uh, hourly earnings there at the top. Yeah. Uh, people in the markets look at a lot at that because that's a signal of uh, inflationary pressures. I'm not saying... Uh, People's wages create inflation. I'm just saying that it's showing that there are price pressures, mm-hmm. and it was expected 0.3, and it's up 0.6. And uh, it, it, this this is probably what I think is driving uh, the bond market lower because mm-hmm. uh, you would have expected with a weak number like that yeah. for the 10 10 year uh, yield to drop. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's actually going up. It's almost up four basis points, the 10-year yield. So mm. uh, I don't think it's a great number. Uh, I'm not saying the bond market is going to collapse because we're yeah. still at very low yields. But it, it could be a first signal uh, that uh, bond investors are worried about stagflation. Yeah. And I saw actually an, an article and 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 from me, I think it was yesterday, but it was uh, Bill Gross. Uh, came out saying how you know just the, the dollars trash, bonds is trash, and they say they literally dogging all these debt instruments, and so there's more billionaires now willing to speak out against the Ray Dalio's and you name it. They're willing to they're speaking out he- you know in a very harsh nature against uh, U.S. debt. And so it, my question to you, real quick, is: Do you think because they're they they obviously know what's going on, they see the long term trajectory, but yet they've also positioned themselves heavily assumably in, in, in gold and other things. But do you think they're they're leading the public astray, astray because the mainstream media is running with this? And I always question whenever I see the mainstream media bought and paid for media using these stories as primary attention getters, because I always like to think the opposite. Do you think this could be some type of, you know, set up or deter from looking in a certain direction you think or what? Uh, Bill Gross, uh, I think he's like seventy-seven, and he he was the Bond King when yeah. when he was at Pimco Pacific uh, uh, Man uh, Pacific Investment Management Company, Pimco. Yeah, he, he he managed trillions of dollars of mostly bonds, you know, fixed income they call it. Mm-hmm. And just because he did that doesn't mean he's always right. Because I think earlier this year he. He thought bonds were going to go, the 10-year yield was going to go up to 3%. Yeah. And I think he got caught wrong-footed because Mm -hmm. the 10-year yield got up to 175 and it's dropped now to like uh, around 130. Yeah. So he's not always right, Um, even though in the normal world where the Federal Reserve doesn't create reserves out of thin air Mm -hmm. uh, to buy bonds and keep the yields low, yeah, uh, he would be right, and I think yields would be four, five, six, seven percent now. But mm-hmm. then the whole thing, uh, House of Cards, would implode. Uh, the key question is whether the Federal Reserve um, is committed enough to keep yields low. Uh, right now, it looks like investors are testing uh, uh-huh. the Federal Reserve. Uh, I think the first reaction I saw on Zero Hedge 
from these uh, non-farm numbers is that this is the end of the talk about tapering because yeah. the economy is weak. But at the same time, the bond yields went up. Yeah. So, so the, right. the, ball, the ball's on the Fed's court now. Are they going to keep printing the money to buy these bonds? Yeah. And, and my automatic assumption would be that uh, they will always remain accommodative because that's the only way the life, that's the only way the system can stay alive. So, yeah. And I think the, this right here exposes more of the the fallacy behind the Fed talk in being able to try to, I guess, you know, front run the markets and give them that, 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 that Fed talk. Given, given that false sense of hope that, you know, they can dial back when actually we know they can't. And then to speak on even further, I, I think what's also going to be a major issue will be, uh, let me actually grab this here, because it's talking about our government uh, wanting to put a little bit of a pause. The Democrats, they got one particular senator who was talking about putting a pause on this $3.5 trillion spending. And so if they don't pass this bill, and I've mentioned this in the past, whenever there is any type of hiccup or glitch in a bad in a, in a bill being passed, the markets automatically respond negatively. And we've had a dip every since uh, every time there is some type of, uh, uh, you know, job only from politicians, something goes wrong. And September is typically a month where stocks usually don't do too well anyway. So could that be this month you think or what? Uh, I don't know. I mean, the the key I think would be the uh, the bond market again. Yeah. Because as I said, most people expect the, the Fed to keep uh, Treasury uh, bonds under control and mm -hmm. yields down. But uh, if we look at, I think uh, the U.S. bond market, mm -hmm. uh, including Treasuries and corporate bonds, it's like 120 trillion. It could be globally 120 trillion. And the Fed's balance sheet, for example, is eight trillion uh most of that of course is treasuries and mortgage-backed securities yeah so uh it, it's like less than 10 percent of the value of the bond market so yeah. if investors get spooked about stagflation and start uh, dumping all kinds of bonds the federal reserve <laughs> is gonna have trouble unless they say oh we're gonna start doing a uh, 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 one trillion of QE a month instead of 120, <laughs> they'd have to really increase it. So yeah, and that would affect not just treasury yields, but it would uh, uh, affect corporate yields. They would rise. Yeah, and that would affect the stock market. And I've seen someone uh, tweet recently that Google. I don't follow the Google uh, stock price mm -hmm. or the chart, but they say that it looks really uh, bearish. They say it's a a hanging man formation. So that could be a signal that the stock market might correct a little bit. Yeah. I'm not saying it's going to crash because people just seem to want to buy on dips these days. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just, so I just typed in here, just government bonds, looking at the treasury yields here. So all the way from the three month to the 30 year, <laughs> uh, this, yeah. uh, this doesn't look too promising for investors that yeah, are using these right. as, uh, investments because in the long term. I know. <laughs> because if people start selling these, you know, the yields will go up. Yeah. And if you if you buy a and when yields go up, the price of bonds go down, especially yeah. in the long in the longer end, because they got more time to go. Yeah. Uh, in the three month and six month bills, that's fine because they're short term paper. Yeah. But uh, they're also not paying much. <laughs> they're yeah, paying like zero zero percent almost. But not today, as I said, you know, uh, I, I would have expected today the 10 year yield to be down like five or 10 basis points because of the weak number. But yeah, it's actually up four, which is uh, I think should be raised some concern for uh, for the Federal Reserve. But yeah. uh, we'll have yeah. to wait and see. Now, and so so this, so we got more couple articles. We jump into them, but yet I got more thoughts that I just want to throw out there. So, typically speaking, the whole sixty forty you know allocation has been the old model of investing moving forward. But yet we're witnessing, witnessing more institutions looking to add onto their balance sheets. You know, cryptocurrency exposure, and of course we got more institutions getting gold like never before. We got pension funds here in the U.S. Uh, talking about getting a little gold or whatever. And so, <laughs> do you think there will be uh, there is more activity happening right now that we're not hearing about to to take up some to, to I guess to cover their their hides with all this type of uh, risk that they're uh, subjecting their investors to. 
because of the lack of uh, their ability to, to earn anything. So do you think there's going to literally come an announcement one day where we're going to hear a, a gang load of institutions coming out saying that they're going to try to get gold or whatever? And then do you think, you know, most institutions might you know favor Bitcoin because it's popular and it seems to be preferred by the mainstream, you think? Well, I, I think we've been hearing about this for the last 18 months already. Yeah. I remember last year, uh, I think the, his guy, uh, Liberty Media CEO Malone, mm -hmm. I forgot his first name. Uh, he's a multi-billionaire in the U.S. And he uh -huh. did an interview with, uh, I think, CNBC or Bloomberg. And he said he's buying tangibles, he's buying farmland. Mm -hmm. uh, so they do come out and, and tell that. But it, it's an exception. It's once in a while. And they, they, they'll speak to a hedge fund manager, you know, Ray Dalio or uh, Druckenmiller, and they'll say, yes, I have gold and stuff. But uh, most of the time, and I don't watch the mainstream, but I can imagine it's always stocks and bonds, uh, yeah. tech. <laughs> um, yes, uh, I, I think there are a lot of people, people moving into cryptocurrencies, but I think uh, I saw last week it was uh, John Paulson who made a killing uh, in the collapse of 08. He, he mm -hmm. bought, uh, he bet against the housing market. Yeah. And he came out and said, he doesn't believe in uh, cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. Am I saying I don't believe in cryptocurrencies? No, but he, he believes in gold. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I have gold and silver and I have mining stocks, but I also have exposure to uh, cryptocurrencies. Yeah. Uh, and, and I've had, uh, through the the videos that I do, uh, I upload it on blockchain based yeah. platforms, so I earn cryptocurrencies. Uh, right now, if wow. people want to know, I, I've got a little bit of Ethereum, and Ethereum has done really well. Right, but uh, there's so many out there, yeah. and I think cryptocurrencies are going to keep going up. But uh, eventually, um, if the dollar really implodes and all fiat currencies implode, mm -hmm. a lot of people that are in cryptos, they're going to jump to gold and silver. Yeah. Um, because gold and silver will be the reference, in my right. opinion. And I think one thing, of course, the distinguishment, the distinguishment between the both of those assets is that one is solely digital and it's still in the system in a sense. It's dependent upon so many factors, whereas in gold and silver, something you can get out of the system. And get into the actual hand, which is there's no there's no substitute for that. There's no replacement for that at mm, all. Yeah, there you go. But anything, but and so yeah, I got me a little little silver eagle right here. Anything, yeah. anything denominated in dollars, I think is going to definitely go up <laughs> because the supply of you un the units is, <laughs> will definitely drive it up. But I think ultimately, like always, it's going to boil down to what can you actually purchase uh, in the real world when you need to go liquidate some of those units. So. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it sells. Like, it looks like yeah. everything's in the green right now. So is it is it going to be temporary? I'm sure it is. But you know, enjoy it while it lasts. Especially for those traders, man. If you're trading, I'm sure you're doing extremely well right now. But uh, I, I think uh, I think the mainstream uh, financial news, business news, uh, they like to to focus on cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. They give it a lot of attention. But uh, and I'm not saying they can keep going higher. And I think they they probably will. But uh, I think there's much more uh, upside potential in hard assets like mm -hmm. commodities. Yeah. Uh, the CRB index is uh, still uh, around just over 200. Mm -hmm. And I think we got up to, I don't know how much it was in 08, maybe 400, 500. So we're nowhere near high. Yeah. I, I think what's overvalued, of course, uh, are uh, the, the stocks, You know, the yeah. major tech stocks. They're the ones driving everything up. Mm -hmm. and, and I saw uh, the other day the um, stock market cap to GDP yeah. is at an all-time high of like 205% uh, during the uh, the stock market boom in 19 in the 20s when you had the crash of 29. Mm -hmm. I think that that GDP that to, that uh, ratio got up to like 122. So now we are at 205. It's a major bubble yeah you see that there's a there's still a lot of room on the upside for yeah commodities and uh yeah so. man okay so yeah so i see let me see we got a lot of we everything's in the green over here crude oil looks like it's down a little bit natural gas yeah so so we got a lot more articles uh mario let's uh let's keep plugging along man that's what happens when you know, one thought triggers another one. So in the UK, a lot of stuff is happening on the energy side, on the emergency side there. 
you know, give us the lay of the land and look what's happening in the UK, man. Now, because I touched some stuff here. Yeah, in the US. this this here is to do with the uh, uh, the the lockdown rules and everything, and they have they 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 only last six months, and you have <laughs> to renew it yeah. every six months, and it's going to come up for renewal now in September. They're saying that uh, there might be some anti-lockdown uh, MPs in the with in the conservative party that might vote against it, uh -huh. but I don't think they will. They're going to keep the this legislation until March next year because the uh, opposition, the Labour Party, they like this kind of stuff. So let's say if there's 50 votes uh, against this, uh, yeah. there will be more than 50 opposition MPs to vote with it. It just goes to show that. Uh, they told us on the Ju July 19th that we're uh -huh. going to have free freedom freedom day. Everything was back to normal, but yeah. we're not. And uh, yeah, so, man, man, man. And, and then with the energy, if you want to bring up the energy story, yeah, uh, we're, we're seeing uh, we're seeing uh, not only in the UK but in the whole of Europe, we use a lot of natural gas for our electricity and also. Yeah, not just residential for, but for a big uh, in for industry. Yeah, and uh, natural gas prices are going through the roof right now, uh, and they talk about the fact that it's su supposed to do with supply chain. There is a bit of that, but the other reason it's going up is because they've made uh, burning uh, coal, for example, really expensive yeah. by creating by creating this uh, emissions futures contract. And the bankers have driven the price of this through the roof. So mm. companies can't, uh, they're not going and saying, oh, we want to burn some coal instead of uh, gas. So yeah. all, I think it's going to be really bad winter uh, mm -hmm. here in the UK and, and in Europe on the continent. Uh, the elderly are, are going to suffer because uh, not just energy prices going up, but we got food prices going up. Mm -hmm. We've got everything going up. And uh, yeah, and this is an agenda. This is all about climate change. They want to make uh, mm -hmm. the uh, energy sector carbon neutral. Yeah. So that, which is crazy in, in my opinion. Yeah, and, and clearly it's it's a clear sign that the goal is to make everything unaffordable. And so at, at, at all costs, you know, if you can afford it, you'll have it. If not, you won't. It'll put them in a position where they can be the the dictator as well as the 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 crutch that you'll have to fall back on if you need help, which means you'll have to comply and do exactly what they say. And that's that you'll own nothing and I guess somehow be happy with it, because if it gets to that point where you had dire straits, you'll be happy with the bare minimum of whatever they're trying to give out to you. So, uh, yeah, very sick and twisted. <laughs> <laughs> it's becoming like uh, in third world countries where yeah. you have a few people who have all the wealth yeah. and they can do anything they want because they can pay for it. But now, uh, you know, if you want to go abroad now uh -huh. uh, on holiday, it's not just uh, complicated with all the tests and like the quarantine. You have to when you come back, if you go to a certain country, you yeah. might have to isolate for 10 days. But these tests, which are in my opinion, not even really good tests. You have mm -hmm. to pay hundreds of pounds yeah. uh, for one person per trip. <laughs> uh, yeah, make it very burdensome, man. So, go. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, here's a question right here. So as always, we are streaming live. So if you guys have a thought or a question, feel free to throw it out there and, and uh, chime our, you know, share our two thoughts on it. But Midnight Green says, does gold bullion coins have value? <laughs> is the pope catholic <laughs> uh, uh, that's a good one. <laughs> oh man so uh gold uh gold is in the air man so let me uh let me see here just uh just some headlines here uh the worth mentioning how uh gold gains at the u.s job data comes in well below estimates here so this is just there are a lot of headlines right now shining light on gold so Definitely, that's a, that's a indicator that uh, people are choosing to uh, get their weight up <laughs> extensively. So let's talk a little bit. I guess uh, what's happening in the in the German area, man. Give us the pulse of what's happening in Germany. And I saw something that uh, somebody put it out there saying that uh, you they're not letting people uh, they're not letting tourists into the country or something like that. I think I saw because of everything like that. I'm not sure if you had a you heard anything about that. Yeah, you know, I haven't heard about that, but I. I 
I, I see that. Uh, I think it was earlier this week. We we had a CPI data from Germany, okay. France, and some other countries in Europe, and they're the highest in like decades. And, mm -hmm. and the Germans are always uh, very worried about inflation. Yeah. Um, and uh, unfortunately for the Germans, I, I think uh, uh, most of them are against being part of the uh, euro area. What's the yeah. euro area? It's not the EU. It, it's having the euro as a currency and having the ECB as the central bank. Yeah. I think a lot of them would rather uh, have the Deutsche Mark because the Bundesbank is a very sound money oriented central bank. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why Germans are buying gold because they don't trust the ECB. <laughs> the ECB is printing so much money. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think the Germans are going to be holding the bag if they don't buy gold because uh, they're the ones financing all, all this uh, QE uh, within the euro area because the countries that are benefiting from it are the countries that are heavily indebted like yeah. Italy, Spain, Ireland, uh, Portugal, and Greece. And uh, I think it's very smart that the Germans are buying gold. And they've had hyperinflation twice in the last century, in 1923 yeah. and after World War II. Yeah. I have uh, I listened to an interview yesterday with uh, Ronnie Stofferly, uh, who's in, in Austria. And he was talking about how several countries in the EU have uh, clamped down on the amount of cash for a bullion that you can actually uh, acquire. And I think it, it used to be $10,000 a transaction, you know, as far as actually far changing, exchanging physical paper notes for gold. And some regions brought it down to 2000. And so every country set their own limits as to how much you'll be able to uh, yeah. redeem your paper notes with. I think in Germany, they did that beginning of last year. But um, what what it actually is in Germany is not that you can't buy more than 10,000 euros mm -hmm. worth of gold with cash. Yeah. It's that uh, above 10,000, ha they have to report it mm. you see, to, to the government. Uh, I think you can still go, but it, he could be right. I don't know. But uh, yeah, they make it harder and harder. For yeah. people to buy uh, and, gold, because and that's they a clear sign. That's a clear system. sign. Yeah, the, the more the more resistance and the more difficult they make it for you to do something, that's probably something that threatens them, which is probably beneficial for you. So it'd be worthwhile shining more light on that. But here's a uh, a thought from Chris. Chris, appreciate that. I love my friend. It says, "What would the markets look like tomorrow if China announced a gold back yuan? What effect would this act have on the price of gold?" Thanks. Whew. If China and, I, and so I once again, this is all just me hearing other commentators, but I heard someone mention that there's already some agreement signed, still and delivered, and ready to be rolled out. It's just, you know, the right timing for it. And it's, of course, has to do with gold. And of course, China, China and Russia leading the way. But I think with this petrodollar system over the last couple of weeks unfold where everybody's running to Russia for defensive support, I think that also plays into as well. So uh, I would imagine the moment that happens. Uh, the West will be exposed. The dollar will tank. Gold will skyrocket. And will, the, will there ultimately be some type of counter? Like, you know, because we have all our, our, our exchange mechanisms that sets the price of gold. We got the London Bull Exchange. We got the COMEX and all those corrupt entities. Do you think they're going to still try to keep that price well below what China and Russia might let it run to? No, or is I, it I don't think no? so. I don't think so because I think the Chinese and the Russians are mm -hmm. working together with uh, our our governments and central banks. Mm. So that would be a, a clear signal, you know, that's it. Uh, I, I think not just the dollar would drop versus gold, but all the uh, major European currencies yeah. would drop uh, uh, versus gold. Uh, someone tweeted out today, I don't have the source, but they, they, they just said that, uh, you know, they allocated $650 billion worth of SDR, mm -hmm. uh, the IMF, recently yeah. Yeah. and apparently russia took their allocation and bought gold with it <laughs> so mm. that's quite interesting yeah so long story short the gold with favorable fiat currencies would go through the go through the floor <laughs> ultimately and so I, and that's just uh, that's is that that mad max scenario that we've always talked about as far as far as how there'll be no way of really understanding how the economy will work assuming Equities are dropped too, as well, and or what? What would other what would other financial well, vehicles look like as well? I don't think it would be particularly Mad Max. It would mm -hmm. just be a stagflationary world. I think uh, a bond market 
bonds would drop, mm -hmm. bond prices, yields would go up, and you would see also the stock market correct as well. Yeah, but yeah, things wouldn't be uh, uh, as plain sailing as they are right now. Mm -hmm. and, and I saw the other day that um, uh, Joe Biden said that um, he, he made a, <laughs> a statement the other day, and, and it was a bit comical that he said <laughs> that uh, the withdrawal went really well. <laughs> but one thing that he said that was interesting is that uh, America is not going to be the policeman of the world anymore. Really? And uh, yeah, I, I saw a I hear that one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's actually, I I think that's a good thing for America because uh, it hasn't really done America any good being like an empire. And right. I don't but, think the founding fathers wanted that. So yeah. The I, thing I would, is, if you if you don't have the reserve currency, you can't be an empire, can you? Right, and and that's the thing. The reserve currency has ran its it's ran its lifespan, and the world is rejecting it. So why not? Uh, I guess accept defeat because our our military might no longer has the the, 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 the threats that it used to have over the last couple of decades. Mm. Because I think technology wise, I think we're definitely we're nowhere near what Russia and China probably has been able to build yeah. up. Where. We can't withstand that, so we can't beat them. So we we'll assume a surrender to them, and everybody yeah. pretty much knows that this administration yeah. is bought and paid for by the and, and, anyway. So, and I, the other thing is, I'm not on either side of a political aisle right. anywhere. <laughs> right. But I think they use these uh, politicians as just uh, front front men or front women, mm -hmm. and what what a better uh, way to like uh, take the dollar off as a world reserve currency destroy the petrodollar and blame it on a, uh, a a guy that's almost 80 years old and that has dementia <laughs> right but, yeah <laughs> and he's just actually just uh, not it's not really his fault because he didn't start all this like yeah 50 100 years ago so uh, i can see what what they're they're doing here probably maybe i'm wrong but uh yeah he's just doing what he's uh been told and paid to do so he you know he's yeah, it, I was watching a speech today in response to uh, uh, they were talking. He talked a little bit about everything, and when he got done speaking about you know the need for this tax bill, that's what they're talking about. You know, paying their fair share, the billionaires can afford it. You know, building down from the top out, bottom out, all that crap. He really hounded uh, you know the fair share narrative of you know getting the wealthier to pay their taxes. But then once he finished up, he it, it showed showed me that he is mentally not capable of doing a lot of things because he's not allowed to speak off the cuff. He cannot go off script because afterwards uh, somebody in this, you know, asked one question about the situation in Texas with the abortion. And, and he, he literally, he holds his folder in, in front of his chest and he, he gathers, gathers his thoughts and he just, he has to put piece by piece together. And he was, he was literally trying to avoid the question. So he threw out some mumbo jumbo that made no sense. And it, it lets me know that he's nowhere in tune or intact with anything. He's literally taking orders, reading off a teleprompter, and that's it. So the real orchestrators of this, whoever they are, they're re really running a show. And it has nothing to do with what's well, in the White it, House. It, what's, is it the 15th Amendment that's supposed to clear that? Like if a president isn't capable? No, I think, uh, I think it's the 25th. The 25th. 25th yeah. Is what, yeah. So where, where is the 25th Amendment? Uh, I, I'm not defending <laughs> Trump, but if right. he was acting like that, uh, there would be major outcry. Uh, right, and, uh, right. But it, with this, would with this media, him, nothing. But, yeah, no. Um, nothing. I want to get your thoughts. Uh, let's just turn. So I got a couple things here to talk about on this side here, because as I, I did a video a while back saying, wherever the automotive industry goes, so goes our nation. And so due to the alleged chip shortage or whatnot, and all that other stuff, GM Ford to halt some production. And so auto sales, I've seen reports about auto sales uh, supply is down severely due to the shortages and prices are going up on some things. Uh, and then you mentioned also about Japan having to shut things down. So it, it, I assume we're going to see some issues in the automotive sector beyond the U.S. pretty soon. But is this another indicator of how bad things are? on the scene that we're not uh, really factoring in probably, or they're not factoring I think, in? Yeah, I, I think so. The supply chain. Yeah. And, and I, I saw as well uh, a chart a few days ago. I think it was on Twitter. Someone put a chart of uh, U.S. car supply. 
Yeah. And it, it's like dropping. That was head down. Yeah. It's got down to the floor. And uh, Toyota in Japan, they, they've had to cut back production. And, and I think a lot of the, excuse me, <clears throat> a lot of the uh, 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 chips that they need for the cars, the electronics, microprocessors and everything, mm -hmm. most of them are produced in Southeast Asia. And we're seeing a lot of these countries like I think Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, uh, Taiwan, having a lot of problems with these uh, with the uh, beer disease and uh, yeah. these uh, variants, so to speak. So yeah. it's probably not going to get better at all. Right. Right. <laughs> Deliberately. So a lot of people, so people say apparently chip shortages in the auto sector because video game companies were using it to create their products. <laughs> so, it yeah, we'll see. For, uh, it also could be affected by uh, uh, cryptocurrency mining. They need yeah. a lot of. Uh, yeah. And that there's a lot more mining uh, rigs and publicly traded companies getting involved in that space as well. Uh, and then on another note here, here's something. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, that's interesting news here in the U.S. It, it seems to be a very interesting time with this. But uh, U.S. gun sales reach 400 million. And so a lot of this had to do with the lockdown, the, the whole lockdown situation last year. A lot of Americans went out getting guns and whatnot <laughs> and buying up all the ammunition. And so it looks like we're 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 arming ourselves even more so heading into this agenda. So we'll see how this plays out. But I'd imagine a lot of other nations would love the opportunity to be able to arm themselves right now, primarily Especially, Australia, New Zealand, stuff yeah, like Australia. that. Australia, <laughs> but oh, yeah. But and, and so back to Australia. Just to mention on that, as I mentioned beforehand, uh, before we went live, uh, the app that they're rolling out. And so they have an app coming out where it looks like everybody will have to, I guess, report where you're where you're located at. And if you're not there with you got 15 minutes to respond. And then I guess the law enforcement is, is coming your way. And I mentioned how it looks like a lot of the, the Commonwealth, former Commonwealth nations are the ones being used as, as you mentioned, guinea pigs. And so what are your thoughts on that? Because Canada, of course, is acting up, acting a fool right now. Australia, New Zealand. What is it? The the, the 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 I guess the queen or the crown sell out their people or are they lead they leading this you think? Uh, I'm not sure who's in charge. Uh, the yeah. queen, uh, cere more ceremonial. Uh, it's then, the people who who run everything. But uh, I think it's outrageous what they're doing in in countries like Australia, yeah. and New Zealand, and Canada. Uh, here is not so bad yet. Maybe mm -hmm. like you said, they're using them as guinea pigs. I saw someone reporting that there's only been about nine deaths from this uh, disease this year in Australia. And, yeah. and they're doing things like that. It's just uh, crazy. Um, it shows that they're quite desperate about something, the people yeah. in charge. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, let's, let's hope that uh, something uh, comes up that yeah. uh, stops this yeah it, it's, it's very concerning and as i always say it's just a matter of time before they try to bring that uh to this country here because we will be the i guess the, the last uh to experience anything like that if this stuff if this stuff succeeds so hopefully there's continuous pushback and of course there's protests and all types of things all around our world it seems gets no mainstream attention but people are out there you know putting their foot down and letting their voice be heard man so i want to wish them guys the best I've had some people call in from Australia talking about the, the, the how you, the, you can't travel freely. They got set different states where they shut stuff down, checkpoints and all types of crazy stuff out there, man. But uh, yeah, I, I've, I've, seen a few, I've seen a few videos of what's happening there. It's just uh, pretty draconian. And <laughs> and it's just for a, a few uh, event, you know, few deaths. Yeah. yeah, it just shows that there is a, an ulterior agenda there. Right. If people don't, if people see this and don't realize this, uh, I, you know, I don't know what will. <laughs> right. Very true. And in, in the meantime, I think having the cryptocurrency space about to reach all time highs. So we got Chris here says that Bitcoin will be at a hundred thousand by the end of the year. And so if gold and silver starts to, you know, take a little spike or whatnot, that right there to me, the financial benefits typically will overshadow all the 
the the governmental stuff, the health issues, all the agenda based stuff to where people feel like they're getting wealthier while also losing their freedoms as well. So I think the distraction side of things like I believe at some point they're going to let cryptos race pretty severely because it's going to be hard to continue to keep this narrative of recovery without stimulus checks. And so the unpl- unemployment ends today or tomorrow. That's going to be less fun, less spending. Retail sales are going to tank heading to the holiday season. What better way to you know, uh, recharge the markets by allowing these things to pump so people can try yeah. to spend more and make people feel you know happier about themselves heading to the holiday season? Because if not, they're going to need some stimulus checks for, for Christmas. And I can definitely see them trying to roll out some type of check heading to the holiday season, man, over here especially. The other thing about Bitcoin, if we are going to 100,000, and I wouldn't put it past uh, that happening, uh, what it means is that the dollar and all the other currencies are imploding. Yeah. So where do you go to if you want uh, if you want to take profit? Well, you're going to have to go into real money, gold and silver. Yeah. Why would you go back into uh, a currency that's imploding? So that's what we need to uh, think about as well. Right. Um, right. You know, uh, yes, it's very good to be holding Bitcoin. But if a million dollars won't buy you like a, a latte, uh, <laughs> what are you going to do with it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bitcoin will go uh, as high as the quantity of currency created. So, yeah, a million dollars, no problem. But yeah, what type of world will we be in at that point? So, mm. yeah, but I guess it's, it'd be better than left holding the bag of those fiat currencies. And it, it have, it's done very well, it done people very well. If you've been in Venezuela or, or Argentina, especially, I had a buddy of mine who uh, a while a while back, I, I, you know, gave him a couple little altcoins and just like literally recently, he, you know, texted me and thanked me for giving them to him just because they were low cap, you know, altcoins then. But they've done a lot better than the Argentinian peso right now. So he was grateful. And of course there's a movement of, you know, cryptocurrency just, you know, sprouting up in Argentina. So it's just interesting to say, man, but uh, let's get ready to dial back. So I'm going to get your thoughts, Mario. We got, we're all green all across the board. looks like in meadows and as well as cryptos, is this going to last or come Monday? We're going or over the weekend, we're going to hear some news. Something going to happen here. Something happened there. And Monday's the market open up in the red. What do you think? Is this something going to stick or, or, or no? Well, I think cryptocurrencies are going to keep uh, moving higher. I mean, they are volatile. Gold and silver, uh, they're looking good. Uh, mm-hmm. A few weeks ago, uh, gold bottomed around below 1700 Yeah. And it's been going up ever since. I think silver is starting to outperform gold, which is a good mm-hmm. signal. I, I think the uh, gold-silver ratio right now is like at 74 Recently, yeah. we got up to 78. So historically, uh, I'm, I'll send you the uh, link. Maybe you can show it to the viewers here, the yeah. gold-silver ratio. Let me. Uh, historically, when silver outperforms, uh, both metals do well. And uh, recently, it's only been gold that's been performing well or outperforming. And, and I've seen also that the, uh, the mining stocks are doing quite well today. Uh, so that's a good signal. So if anything, uh, we might, uh, if we get any news during the weekend, I think it would be even more, probably more positive for, for gold and silver. Yeah. So there you go. That's the gold silver ratio. If you put it maybe, uh, on the top there, if you press one D mm-hmm. it'll give you the daily chart. Yeah. So yeah, you can see it's, it, see, uh, since July, Silver has not done really well. Mm-hmm. Gold has gone up um, more on relative terms, but yeah. now it's starting to come back down. And mm-hmm. I think that's a good signal that, that I made a video about 10 days ago or so saying that we needed to see silver start outperforming gold. Yeah. To see both metals start doing, doing well. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and that's the thing, like from all the, the people in the mining space out there saying that it's coming out of the ground. The ratio has gone down <laughs> over the years from as far as what's available, you know, near surface type of thing. So, yeah, the metal is definitely not it's not becoming more plentiful. <laughs> it's becoming harder to find. So I'm not sure why it's, you know, other than all the manipulation and stuff like that, why it's even as high as it is. But uh, I saw somebody mention about, you know, 32 to one uh is what's in the near future and of course that equals definitely hundred dollar plus type silver and you know two thousand three thousand type gold so we'll see but 
yeah, based upon the trajectory of all the currency being created, uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. But the question is, what type of world will we live in when we get there? So, but anyway, uh, Mario, man, it is always good to connect. Uh, Manico64 on YouTube, do great work daily. Uh, it's, it's always good to connect, my friend. I want you to have a good weekend. Leave us with some any any pardon wisdom or any uh, thoughts to send us to this Labor Day weekend on this side. Yeah, just uh, focus on yourself and your family and your close community around mm -hmm. you. Try to avoid uh, all the noise out there. Yeah. Afghanistan. Um, yeah, everything else political. I know there's uh, these storms <laughs> that have been pretty bad. Yeah, and that's not good. But uh, yeah, uh, and, and try not to let all the draconian things that they're talking about get you down. Uh, just say no for, for as long as you can uh, to yeah. all that they want to impose on people. Yeah, I agree, man. And definitely take some time to unplug from the Internet. <laughs> Because uh, there's been more fear than faith put out there. So unplug and, you know, find some things to be grateful for. And just, man, count your blessings because we all got more than enough to be grateful for. So anyway, people, but it's always good to connect. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hit the thumbs up button. Share this video. Definitely Manico64. Go connect with him. And uh, we'll be back at it next week. Same time, same place. Enjoy your day, people. Peace.